Hi, I'm Dr. Elliot Adam from ElliotOracle.com. I'm also the author of the award-winning Fearless Tarot and Tarot in Love, Consulting the Cards and Matters of the Heart. Both books are published by Llewellyn and are available online wherever books are sold. And if you're looking for the perfect gift for the tarot lover in your life, I have some signed copies available of my books at ElliotOracle.com. So it is time for this week's Oracle Reveal. Yesterday on my social media, I placed up a photo of three different animals and I I asked you to use your intuition and just ask yourself which animal's calling to you because that animal has your message. And the three animals were the tortoise, the cat, and the panda. So if you're just joining me now, ask yourself which animal is getting caught in your head. It doesn't have to be your favorite animal. It just has to be the one that you seem to really be attracted to right now. So the first animal is the tortoise, and this card says you're too fragmented. So do whatever it takes to get grounded. And tortoise is that archetype of Mother Earth. Tortoise is a very grounded, plodding creature. And what tortoise could really say as well is that it's time for you to take a time out to really get back in touch with the earth, to really get stabilized in some way. Maybe your head has been a little too spacey, and now it's time to really get uh, back earthed again or get back in touch with the earth. Um, also, tortoise is known for its age. It can live over a century. And so this could be a time when you're also applying your own inner wisdom that you've gained through your experience, your time on earth, uh, to the current situation to get grounded, to get your uh, sort of head in the game again. First card for tortoise is where it's best to place your focus. And we get the emperor card. And the emperor card can indicate that this is a time for you to take charge in your life. It might also be a time for you to really get organized in your thinking, to also get stabilized in some way. The emperor is numbered four in the major arcana. And four for me is all about foundation work. And just as the tortoise has those four stout legs that supports its bulky shell, so too, this is going to be a time for you to establish some sort of foundation for yourself to be successful. It may feel a little bit like you're getting into the minutiae right now. It might also feel like you're having to do more in the outside external world right now. But it's so important that you're laying the groundwork right now for your future success. The emperor is also a card of initiation and being assertive. So this is time, uh, time to go for it instead of second guessing yourself. And then we have the advice from your inner wisdom. And look at that. We have the Empress card uh, in the vintage tarot, this deck is called. And, you know, wow, what a power couple. We got both the Emperor and the Empress. And to me, what that's really telling me is that there is this need for balance between both the masculine and feminine, feminine aspects of yourself this next week. It might also be a time where harmony needs to be brought back by really identifying what part of your life seems lopsided. Are you too retreated? Are you too uh, in the Empress's garden where it's just soft and comfortable and creative and you just don't want to leave and you're neglecting something in that external world that the Emperor governs? Or are you so inundated with the external world, what you have to do out in that world, uh, the achievements, the accomplishments that you're trying to make, that you're forgetting to retreat to the Empress's garden. You're forgetting to get back in touch with your own inner nature. This card uh, combination as well can indicate that there's like this power couple energy kind of going on here. It could indicate that you might need someone else to balance out your energy or that you might find that you're benefited by working with another individual, maybe someone who sees your blind spots or can really complement some of the energy that you're bringing to the table. But I just feel like there's this really lovely balance of opposites that's found in both of these cards and also power. So this is going to be a wonderful week for the tortoise to really establish long-term success uh, toward uh, personal empowerment. And then we got the mythic archetype that's going to help you. And we get Anubis in the Egyptian gods oracle deck. Uh, Anubis is the guide in the underworld. He helps guide people through their biggest shadows, their greatest difficulties. And although he has a dark appearance, the uh, you know black jackal-headed god, he's also a really lovely archetype that's loyal, protective. And he guides you toward the scales that weigh the heart. So this could be a time when you're just taking an inventory of what you're carrying in your heart at this time. Is it lighter than a feather? Maybe it's time to release some of the burdens or baggage that you've accumulated. 
It might also be a time, because the scales appear on Anubis's card, that you're balancing these two powerful archetypes within, within yourself. It's so important that we don't villainize one archetype over the other, or think that only one archetype is necessary for us. It's balance that's going to be the name of the game for you this next week, and it's what's going to lead towards your personal success. Next, we're going to go into the cat animal spirit. And this card says it's time to strike out on your own and relinquish your over dependency on others. And cat can just indicate it's time to get independent right now. It's time to trust your own counsel. Trust what you know to be true for you. You know, when you call a cat, it doesn't just automatically come to you like a dog does. It thinks about it. It's like, well, do I really want to? And so too for you, you need to realize that you have a choice in life. Just because other people are putting demands on you or expecting certain things doesn't mean that you have to go along with those expectations all the time. And maybe the cat is also saying it's time to get rid of your over-dependency on pleasing other people, trying to give them what they want in order to uh, feel like you're validated by them. It's so important that you're trusting your own counsel. First card for cat is where it's best to place your focus, and we get the Five of Swords. And the Five of Swords for me can be a warning card not to take on more than you can handle at this time. The Five of Swords can represent that your energy might feel scattered. And in the case of that cat message, maybe you're scattered by trying to please too many people. Maybe there's too many things that you're trying to do all at once perfectly, and it's really feeling like you're inundated and you're overwhelmed. And so the Five of Swords is saying it's time to come up with a priority list. What's the most important thing that needs your focus at this time? And it's time to start with that thing and let all that other stuff go. So I just feel for Five of Swords, for the cat this next week, pick your battles. Uh, pick the thing that is your real priority this next week to focus on. And all these extraneous things, these demands that might be put on you by other people or a sense of obligation, maybe it's time to use the word no. Maybe it's time to assert yourself or put up a boundary and just make sure that you're in control of where your life is being led. Next is going to be advice from your inner wisdom. And look at that. We got Lady Justice. And Justice uh, is also about balance. But she's saying that the quickest route toward balance in your life is through truth. And so what you may need to do is tell the truth to other people about what you're needing. Instead of getting stressed out and saying, why is this always happening? Why are all these people bothering me? And I, I can't do it all. And I'm so frustrated. And God, I'm mad. You know, Justice is saying you're in charge. You can stop it all right now by just saying, here's what my truth is. Here's what I need at this time. And also justice can say that you're needing to apply logic to your situation right now. The five of swords and justice counter, uh, you know, put it counter to one another can really indicate that there's a choice here. You can get overwhelmed by that element of water that's on the five of swords. You got those people who are kind of gloomily looking at that element. They're worried about uh, their emotions or their feelings. Or you can let that element of air, that fresh breeze blow through, uh, which is symbolized by logic. And uh, just really do the thing that makes the most sense for you logically at this time. Uh, I just think that it's time to be dispassionate and not overwhelmed. And the mythic archetype that's going to help you this next week is Hu. And his card says exploration, but what the uh, god Hu is associated with in Egypt is he's the god of millions of years. He can say that it's time to put your situation in the context of the eternal. He can also indicate that it's time for you to look at what's happening right now and ask yourself, is this really going to matter in a hundred years or even one year or in a million years? It might be a time as well to put your own life story in the perspective of the eternal. Maybe it's time to do some past life work. And maybe it's time to really look at your current life and say, you know what, I'm going to make this life the best possible life I can make it. And maybe it's by really declaring what I need or what I want instead of trying to live my life to please others. So I just kind of feel like this is a time to get a little perspective. And then finally, we have the panda animal spirit. And this card says, create a sacred space for yourself in your home or in your place of work. And Panda does retreat into the uh, forest, and uh, it can indicate that this is a time for you to kind of clear, to create space for yourself that is sacred. Maybe it's time to get in touch with your spirit again. First card for Panda is where it's best for you to place your focus this next week. And we have the Page of Cups, 
who for me is one of the most sensitive cards in the tarot, but he's also one of the most creative cards as well. And maybe the sacred space that you're needing to create, if you're attracted to the panda, is creating a space where some of this creativity can be uh, worked out, where you can express that creativity. Maybe the sacred space is also the place where you can start to connect with that little fish that's whispering into your ear. You know, the fish on the Page of Cups knows where all the sunken treasure is under the water. Maybe you're needing to listen to your own intuition and make space for that. But also the Page of Cups is one of the most sensitive cards in the tarot, so he can indicate it's time to create a sacred space for you to work through your feelings, your emotions, to allow those feelings to flow. You're really sensitive this next week, and so it's so important that you're creating an environment that you can retreat to that feels supportive. Next is going to be advice from your inner wisdom if we pick the panda and we do got the death card. And the death card, uh, you know, often gets a, a gasp from all of us when we see it. Well, number one, because it's called death and, you know, that, that doesn't always sound very good. And there's a lot of tarot readers out there who say death just, mean, just, death just means change. No big deal. Don't worry about it. Big deal. And yet it, it kind of feels like a heavy card. And the reason for that is because death does represent change, but it represents irreversible change, permanent change. And there's something in front of the panda where you're weighing your next steps and you're knowing that if you cross this next threshold, there's no going back to the old way. There's no getting the toothpaste back into the tube. There's gravity when the death card comes up. And yes, sometimes death also has to do with grieving something, mourning something that you're letting go of. But always death is necessary when it comes up in a reading. And we have to look at that sun that rises over the horizon in the background of the death card, which will often indicate a new beginning, a new start is going to follow. And so I do feel there's a huge inner transformation going on. And you're needing a safe, uh, safe and sacred place to go to in order to sort of process and digest all the emotions that are coming through your personal transformation. And the mythic archetype that's going to help you is Shu. His uh, card says order and peace. And Shu is actually the god, much like Atlas in Greek mythology, who holds the heavens up. He separates the heavens from the earth. And he creates space in between those two things for humanity to thrive, for life to thrive. This could be a time for you to create order in your life by creating space, creating that sacred space. And I also just feel like this is going to be a time for you to give yourself space this next week. So take a break, take a step back, listen to what that inner child of the Page of Cups is telling you, and know that that inner child is going to be your greatest guide through the transformations that are ahead. And that is this week's Oracle. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can always schedule a one-on-one -on -one tarot session with me at ElliotOracle.com. Also, I got those signed books uh, available there too. And I have gift cards uh, available, either online gift cards or ones that I can send out. And there's tons of free material at ElliotOracle.com as well. If you're stumped on a tarot card meaning, I have a whole uh, free resource of what those meanings are from my perspective and little one minute video clips that kind of put the cards meaning in a nutshell. I do hope that you're going to have a wonderful week, whatever it is that you're doing. And I do look forward to seeing you again here next week. So do take care.